Do you sometimes feel like your days are passing without anything productive getting done? Or maybe, do you want to track things that aren't done on a daily basis, making a regular habit tracker ineffective? Well, a productivity tracker might just work for you. Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashikaran and welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be looking at the productivity tracker, or as the original creator calls it, the productivity level board. I first used this tracker back in April 2020 and found it hugely helpful to see what productive things I was filling my days with. My version is a little different from the original productivity level board, so in today's video I'll be taking you through what it is, how it works, the versions that I've used so far, and ways that you can make it your own. Now you've likely seen a couple of videos about this type of spread, and I do have the original video from Ricardo of the Booster Journal, as well as some of the others from other creators in the description box below. But in this video I've tried to consolidate all that information and give you some new ideas on how this type of layout can work for you. But without further ado, let's jump in. The Productivity Tracker, or Productivity Level Board, is a monthly tracker that gives you a compact and visual representation of how productive you were, and in what ways, for each day of the month. It's similar to a habit tracker or a time tracker, except that you're not necessarily tracking things that you want to do each and every day, and you're focusing on the ways you're being productive rather than just the ways you're spending your time in general. On a time tracker, typically each box represents the same amount of time, but on this type of tracker they don't have to. As the name Productivity Level Board suggests, it's also based on a leveling system. So the more productive things you do, the higher a productivity level you get to on any given day. This essentially gamifies your productivity, which can act as a really good motivator for some people. In its most basic form, the Productivity Level Board is a board of boxes, which you fill with icons to represent the ways you were productive on any given day. So that's what the tracker is, but how does this work in practice? Well, the first thing you're gonna have to do is rule up the board. To do this, each page is ruled up to allow for a one centimeter row for each day of the month and one centimeter columns to make the overall grid. In the original layout, there were 11 columns, so one for the day number and 10 for the productivity tasks. I prefer to have mine fill the entire of a page, and I also include an initial for each day of the week. So I have a 2cm column for the day number and initial, and then 11 1cm columns for the tasks. The task columns are then sectioned off into the different levels, following that whole productivity level board idea. In the original version, there were 3 columns for level 1, 2 columns for levels 2 and 3, and then 3 columns again for the plan section. Having the extra column for the one we've got here, there are now four columns for the plan section. The sequence of three for level one, and then two, and then two, comes from the idea that going through your day, getting to three productive things can be relatively easy at the start, but adding extra productive things on top of that gets harder, so the levels are divided to reflect that increased difficulty. This kind of goes against what happens in typical games, where leveling up at the start of the game is quite easy, and then getting to higher levels requires you to do a lot more. But to actually remain motivating, having this reversed on the tracker works better. As mentioned in the original video though, you can have as many columns as you want, and you can divide them in any way you want. So as I said, on this one we have three columns for level one, two columns for levels two and three, and then four columns for the plan section. With the board set up, how do we actually use it? So at the end of each day, you fill the row for that day from left to right with the productive tasks that you did. Each type of productive task that you're tracking is assigned a pictogram or an icon to represent that task. For instance, you could have a washing machine icon for doing laundry and a garbage can icon for taking out the rubbish and you fill as many boxes as are needed for that day. The planning section is used to set your intentions for that day, so it should be filled in before the day itself, or at least before you start getting things done on that day. This could be done the evening before, or as part of your weekly planning or review session. In general though, this plan section is a way to see how what you intended to do lines up with what you actually did, or how it doesn't. With that information, let's have a look at an example. 
Let's say that before this day, we had planned to do some laundry, take out the rubbish, and do some budgeting. In the plan section, we would put icons for those three tasks. So that could be a little washing machine, a little garbage can, and a dollar sign. This would be filled in at some point before we get underway with that day. So as I said, it could be the morning of, the night before, etc. Come the end of this day though, we want to record what actually got done. So let's say that the laundry and the budgeting happened, but we didn't quite get around to taking out the rubbish. Then I could put the icons in for those tasks that did happen, filling from left to right in this section here. So those are my planned tasks dealt with, but that's not necessarily the only thing that I might have done to be productive. Let's just say that along with the laundry and the budgeting, I also cleared out my email inbox, went grocery shopping, and did some meal prep. I would then include the icons for those tasks in here too. So starting off with the email inbox, maybe that one's a little envelope icon, that brings me to the end of level 1. Completing another task would take me into level 2. So that would be the grocery shopping and then the meal prep. So we'll have a little grocery cart and a knife and fork. This means that on this day I would have completed level 2, but not quite reached level 3. That's where the idea of motivation comes in. If I completed just one more productive task, I would then reach level 3 rather than be on level 2. One of the things to keep in mind with this tracker is that you don't have to fill the tasks for each day in any particular order. But that's not to say that you can't. In this example, I put the things from my plan first, and then followed this with the other tasks that I did. You could of course fill these in chronologically, so the sequence from left to right reflects how your day went in order. Personally, I prefer to group my tasks together on the tracker, depending on what category I have them in. So whether they be work-related, housework, personal, etc. Another thing to think about is the time or duration of a productivity task. Let's just say the next day you spend all of your time working on one thing. For instance, let's say that you're working on an assignment, essay, or project, and you spend hours upon hours working on it. Does this mean that all of your hard work will only fill in one box on your tracker? In his original video, Ricardo talks about also considering the duration of an activity when you're setting up your key. Rather than just having an icon for assignment work, you instead also include the amount of time, for instance, one hour or two hours of assignment work. Then when you come to fill in your tracker at the end of the day, you fill multiple boxes with the same icon to more accurately reflect the amount of time spent doing that productive task. For instance, let's say that our key has one hour of assignment work as this little paper icon. If three hours were spent doing assignment work, then three boxes would be filled with that icon. There are plenty of reasons you might want to try a tracker like this. First and foremost, it shows you how and when you were productive. With regards to the plan section, over time it can show you how what you plan to do lines up with what you actually get done. For instance, is there a certain task that you always plan to do on a certain day of the week, and it always ends up getting pushed off to another? This layout also does well to give you information about your routines, in terms of when you do or don't do certain things in any given month or week. Looking at the levels in particular, you can see which days in the week you're most productive, and use this to better plan when you want to get things done, whether those be tasks in general or particular tasks. For instance, do you find that there are particular days of the week where you get the most done, and others where you don't really get a lot done at all? How can you take that information into account when you plan what you want to get done in any given week? Also, given that this type of tracker isn't just tracking the things you do each and every day, it can double as a when did I last type spread. For instance, when did I last wash the sheets, or change the oil in the car, or maybe when did I last wash my hair? Different things are considered productive for different people. Now, as I mentioned, the way I use the productivity tracker is a little bit different from the original. For one, I don't use the leveling system, mainly because the function of my spread isn't to motivate me to be more productive, it's just to record the ways I am being productive. I also find that, if I turn my journal this way, I already naturally have an indication of how productive I was without the levels. 
This essentially acts as a bar graph to show me the days that I was being productive in a wide range of areas, compared to the days where I focused on only a few things. I have an assigned amount of time to my tasks, so just because this one is low in terms of the number of boxes that are filled, it doesn't mean that I wasn't productive on this day. It just shows that I focused on less things. Following the idea of not using the levels, I also don't include the planning section. Instead, if I do want to plan a few of the ways I want to be productive on any given day, I'll just pencil in those icons. Then if I do complete them, I can fill them in with pen. This is mainly for aesthetics. You can see I also like to use colour coding on my tracker so that I can see at a glance what types of tasks I spent the majority of my time on, either in a day or during the month as a whole. As I mentioned before, I also like to put the initial for each day, rather than separating the weeks with a thicker dividing line or something similar. As you can see, I also include a key for my tracker on the page of the tracker. This isn't something that's necessary, but I just put them in here because this is the first time I was using this style of layout, so I wanted to have the key nearby just while I was getting used to the icons. So we have my tracker for April, my tracker for May, where you can see I cut off the top of the Dutch door so I could see the full title. And then we have my tracker for July, where instead of having the Dutch door, I opted to put the key in the top here. This month I've also not been colour coding or ordering my tasks by category, which means that I can fill them in as I do them, rather than having to wait till the end of the day. Defining and setting up your key is pretty much the most important thing when it comes to making this tracker work for you. The things that I or others deem productive may not be the same as the ones that you deem productive. For some people, just getting up, making the bed, and having a good breakfast are big achievements that would be worth recording. For others, it'll be something else. I know that one of the things that I record on my productivity tracker is the time that I spend on Netflix. Now, I know you're sitting there thinking, Jess, what the heck? Watching Netflix is not a productive task. <laughs> but for someone like me who can quite easily let their work consume all of their time, Taking time for myself and relaxing is productive in terms of me looking after my mental health. As I said, we want this to work for you, so selecting things to track and record that are productive for you is important. When developing your key, my recommendation is to make a list of the things you want to track first, and then find easy to draw icons that can represent those things. As a starter, it can be helpful to break your life into categories, and then think of the productive tasks that are done in those areas. For instance, household work, personal productivity, family tasks, those for work or business, etc. You can also consider the categories that aren't typically deemed as productive. Remember, we want these to align with your definition of productive tasks. And you could also consider the categories related to your goals. For instance, if you have goals related to being more socially connected, including the tasks that you can do to develop that would be a good idea. Going from brainstorming your bigger life categories into the productive tasks that fall under each of these can really help to add a bit of structure to your key. If like me you want to colour code the different categories as well, forming your key in this way can help save you time and make sure that you don't miss tasks. Once you have your list of productive tasks, likely a few more than these, it's then time to assign them to symbols. The nice part about icons is that they are simple to draw, but of course some are more simple than others. Pick symbols and icons that you can draw easily and confidently. We want this tracker to be easy to fill in, so that you actually use it. If icon doodles aren't really your thing, simple shapes and letters make perfectly good symbols for your key. Sometimes items in your list of productive tasks can be quite similar. For instance, you might have wash the towels and wash sheets separately. An easy way to differentiate between these is by using smaller symbols or letters combined with the regular icon. For instance, if for washing we have a small washing machine, to differentiate between washing towels or washing sheets we could use a little T and a little S. Once you've decided on your key though, it's then time to plan how you want to include it either on your spread, in your journal, or somewhere else. As I've only used this tracker a few times, what I've tried is having it as part of a Dutch door, so for April, and then similar but slightly different in May, 
and then currently I have it in a smaller form at the top of my spread for July. What you could also do though would be keep it as part of a long-term collection, either somewhere else in your journal or in a separate journal. Or you could always make your key on a separate piece of paper so that you could just tuck it into the back pocket of whatever journal you're using. So that's a pretty in-depth look at what the tracker is, how you set it up and use it, and how I've used it previously. But what other ways can we change it to make it work for you? One way we already talked about is developing your own key and your own set of icons for your own personal list of ways to be productive. Don't just stick with the traditional methods of productivity. Make sure that there are things included on your key that are productive for you in particular. As I showed you in my trackers, you can color code the different types of productive tasks. So for me, that's my work, things related to Jashi Karin, my home tasks and my personal tasks. Of course, those categories work for me, but maybe if you're a student, you might want to have a category related to study. If you're using this type of tracker for work productivity in particular, you could color code things related to different projects or other things in particular that you were working on. As I mentioned, I like color coding because it shows me at a glance where I spent the majority of my time. If you're going with the leveling system, a change that I would probably make would be to the header just to make it a little bit easier to see where the levels actually are. So following the division we have at the moment, we have three columns for level one, which means if you complete three tasks, you've completed level one. But to actually get to level two, you have to do four tasks. What I'd probably do to change the header would be to write level one above this line here, just so you can see a little more clearly that that's the divider for level one, which takes you into level two. So getting to here, you've completed level 1, getting to there, you've completed level 2, getting to there, you've completed level 3. Of course, as we mentioned before, you don't have to have three tasks for level 1, two in level 2, and two in level 3. You can change that as well. Maybe you decide you want two in level 1, two in level 2, and three in level 3. You can have more levels or less levels. Maybe you don't want to just go to level three. Maybe you want to go to level four or level five and get rid of the planning section. Maybe instead of levels, you want to use them for categories instead. And this would be especially helpful if there was something in particular that you wanted to focus on for the month. Maybe you want to ensure that every single day you're getting a self-care item in. So you could have a column that was dedicated to just self-care. Another change you can make to the board is making it a little bit easier to see where each week is or where each level is. You can do this by changing the thickness of the pen that you're using or using color. So for instance, highlighting the rows that are for the weekend or highlighting each alternating level. What you could also do would be to combine this tracker with something else. Maybe for instance, a mood tracker. So each day, not only do you record the productive things you did, you can also put in a space for your mood. Or maybe the amount of sleep you got, or the amount of steps you did. This would just help you to see if there's any correlation between the amount of productivity you had, and the amount of those things you had. So are you more productive when you get more sleep? Are you more productive when you're in a better mood? Following that idea, you could also convert the plan section into a space for daily notes. This could let you see what in particular made a certain day very or not so productive, and can give you kind of a recipe for success in the future. If you're running low on space and you can't justify using a full double page for this kind of a tracker, you can condense it and put it onto one page. If you were to do this, you'd want to make your icons very simple, or possibly use a color code instead, just because the boxes would be a lot smaller. Of course, we've also been looking at this on a monthly basis, but you could include it as part of a weekly spread. Especially if you're not too sure if you want to commit to having it for the full month, trying it on your weekly could be a good way of getting a little taste tester. We've also been looking at this in terms of productivity, and while I have encouraged you to consider things that aren't traditionally deemed as productive things, if you consider them productive, do include them, you could use this style of tracker for things that aren't productivity related at all. For instance, you could use it for exactly the opposite and have this as a ways I wasted time today spread. You could adapt it to look at the action steps that you're taking on your goals, or things that you're working on for particular projects. Those are just some ideas, but there are likely a lot of other ways you could use it. My recommendation is try it out and tweak as you go. Change your icons to include things that you start doing, 
or get rid of the ones that you aren't using. Change the layout to work for you. Hopefully you found this video insightful, and I'd love to know if you're considering using a tracker like this for yourself. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and you might be interested in my video I did for icon style doodles, especially when it comes to developing your key. Thank you for watching team, if you have any thoughts, comments or feels, please do leave them in the comment section. And if you wanted to see more from me, feel free to go check out one of my other videos. Until next time. Bye!